65,000 tons, 280 meters long, 80 meters wide. And getting this aircraft carrier from the basin here where we're non-tidal out into the river and out to the North Sea is, is quite a challenge, quite a feat. <laughs> Leaving the direct entrance here to get us out of the river, we have about 50 centimeters of water underneath the keel to the seabed. Uh, we're going to take things quite carefully. So the whole evolution from here out to the North Sea takes about seven or eight hours. Um, it'll take a whole day really. And of course we've got to leave here at high water sit in the river until the low water five hours later so we can squeeze underneath the fourth road and rail bridges. When we look at the journey we've undertaken so far, getting this aircraft carrier through her build process and now being on the cusp of going to sea, I think we can reflect on many, many, many thousands of people's efforts. And there are thousands of people who have been working extremely hard on our behalf across the entire endeavour from industrial partners through the Royal Navy and of course DNS who've done such a, a good job in supporting us up here. It's a long way away but so close in other ways and a lot of people have been so closely involved in getting to this, this position now and we've hit all major milestones really successfully and I can't say how grateful I am as the captain's DNS and all the team down south who've done so much on our behalf. Well I think these aircraft carriers are a step change. They are conventional strategic deterrents and will play a central role in UK defence for the next 50 years. So for us to have a deplorable sea base, four and a half acre flight deck, she can move 500 miles a day with her group around the world, swing rolling from uh, bombing the enemy one day to supporting Britain through the next, to fast relief, humanitarian assistance and just showing the flag around the world. I think we'll see them in the future as being totemic and vital aspects central planks of UK defence.